Before we get started here, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell icon down below for more videos. Also make sure to check out a link to my DCS World Player Survey pinned in the comments down below. Today we're going over a quick tip on how to get the most out of the INS or inertial navigation system of the F-14A and B Tomcat. This tip or trick was talked about a lot at the initial release of the F-14 module, but I think it's been slightly lost to the sands of time. And if we can bring this procedure back into the collective consciousness of the DCS World community, it will allow F-14 pilots and RIOs to navigate right alongside more modern aircraft through complex flight plans, as well as make mission creation far easier on all the mission makers out there. Keep in mind that this trick applies to flying with Jester or a human Rio equally. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started with creating a flight plan for our F-14 Tomcat. As you guys can see, we already have a loadout set up and ready to go for our aircraft, alongside a beautiful custom paint scheme created by one of my community members for our fictional nation that we've been using in our ongoing campaign on my Discord server. So as I'm sure many of you guys out there know, the F-14 Tomcat's INS leaves quite a lot to be desired in comparison to more modern aircraft that we have in DCS like the Harrier or the Hornet or the Viper. However, using the tips and tricks that we're going to go over in today's video, you can make it a lot easier on yourself as the pilot or Rio, as well as a lot easier on yourself as the mission maker integrating Tomcats into your big mission alongside their more modern brethren. So of course, as we all know guys, the INS of the F-14 can only hold 7 waypoints at a time. Waypoints 1, 2, and 3, the special waypoints of initial point, surface target, and fixed point, and the final waypoint of HB or home base, which is whatever waypoint you've set to a landing point. This can make the actual creation of Tomcat flights and integration of them into missions much more labor intensive for the mission maker because those special waypoints of IP, FP, and ST have to be placed manually on the map outside of the normal waypoint creation tool in the mission editor. So for example, to create those special waypoints, we have to go all the way to navigation target points, manually place this guy in the map, Make sure it's labeled the correct label you want for the, you know, sequence of waypoints that Tomcat pilots are supposed to navigate through. Add an additional one, type in again the correct name for that special waypoint, and so on and so forth. Now with other types of aircraft, you can simply copy and paste entire flights, and it copies and pastes their waypoints over. But with the F-14, these navigation target points or special waypoints do not actually copy over when you copy and paste an entire Tomcat flight, leading to a lot more extra work on the mission maker. However, we can fix this by simply just ignoring the navigation target points and just adding waypoints as normal just like you would for any other aircraft like the F-A-18, the F-16, or the AV-8B for an example. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a flight, uh, flight plan here. And let's pop seven waypoints onto the map. So we'll pop in one here. We're gonna kinda just place these kinda randomly to make them very easy and stand out while sitting on the ground cycling through various waypoints. There's four, here's five, here's six, and here's seven. Kind of in a half, of, half of a star shape almost. That's gonna make it very easy to see the different distances and of course different headings that we're gonna have to fly to get to those waypoints. So when we load into the mission, we're going to be given a list of all of these waypoints on our kneeboard, the same way you would be given a list of all these waypoints populating the special uh, waypoints of IP, ST, and FP. So for a human Rio, it really doesn't matter. They can just take those extra waypoints and pop them into those special waypoints of IP, FP, and ST. And when working with Jester, I'll show you guys in just a moment here how to actually make Jester take those waypoints and pop them into the special waypoints. This is going to allow you guys to swap waypoints out and have far more than seven waypoints in a mission and navigate just as easily alongside your more modern aircraft uh, squadron mates in FA-18s, F-16s, Harriers, JF-17s, whatever it is. 
So let's hop in the cockpit of the Tomcat and go over that now. Additionally, this is going to make it much, much easier on mission makers because now, because we've just placed waypoints using the standard waypoint placing tool in DCS's mission editor, you can copy and paste these Tomcat flights at will and all of those waypoints will still populate and be there. We're just taking the work and putting a little bit more work on the pilot and Rio in the Tomcat, but it will all work out just the same. So we just got ourselves a hot started Tomcat here. And we got some broken clouds and some rain. Definitely not a great day to be in in real life, but uh, it's really pretty in DCS, I'll tell you that. So when we open up the knee board, we get the actual custom knee boards for the Tomcat themselves. And if we scroll to the right, we can get a list of all of the waypoints that are placed in the mission editor. Now notice that FP, IP, and ST are not populated here. This is because we did not place those special waypoints in the mission editor themselves. Rather, they are now down here in waypoints 4, 5, and 6. And you'll see in a moment here, because we're hot started, that Jester, through the imaginary startup procedure that he did before we hopped in with the hot start, did not load them into FP, IP, and ST. Similarly, if we had done a cold start, he would have automatically started to populate these waypoints if we had placed them on the mission editor. But we can manually tell Jester to load waypoint 4, 5, and 6 into FP, IP, and ST very, very easily. So let's go over that now. If you open up the Jester menu and go to the navigation utility, then go to the Restore Mission Steer Point utility, and you choose which waypoint you want to move these guys down here up to, you can get started very easily. So we'll start with the fixed point, and we'll go to more steer points, and we'll tell Jester to move waypoint four listed on the knee board here up to the fixed point. Waypoint right four. And you can hear him working the INS in the backseat now as he inputs these coordinates into the FP option in the INS system. All right, sounds like he finished. So let's go to navigation utility, select destination, fixed right point. Right. Switching to fixed point. And boom, there it is, 27 nautical miles away, out to the northeast, exactly where we placed waypoint number four in the mission editor. So let's go ahead and have him navigate to initial point. Switching to initial point. And we can see there are no values inputted for initial point, which matches what we're seeing here on the knee board. So now let's go ahead and have Jester input waypoint 5 into initial point or IP. Restore mission steer point. We want him to put it into initial point. More steer points. Waypoint 5. And boom, way out there to the northeast of us at a much longer distance, just like we placed in the mission editor itself. So let's do it one more time. Let's go ahead and set our steer point to surface target. Switching to our surface target. And no value inputted for that waypoint. And let's have him move waypoint six up into ST. Surface target, more steer points, waypoint right, right. six. And now 
again, he's going to be moving waypoint 6 up into surface target. Nice. And there we go. That's kind of our runway lineup point that we placed in the mission editor. And we can say, see, it's, uh, you know, about 40 miles right down at the, uh, you know, same course line of the runway itself. So beautiful. So that is basically a just a demonstration on how you guys can make mission making in the F-14 a lot easier. And then the Rio and the pilot themselves can then manually move these waypoints up into the actual reference points in the INS system so you can navigate to them. Now keep in mind guys that this kneeboard will populate as many waypoints are as placed in the mission editor itself. So let's say you had uh, 17 waypoints, it would populate all the way to waypoint 17 and it would be on the Tomcat pilot and the Tomcat Rio to move these waypoints up into the actual reference points of the INS to allow them to actually navigate to them. It's just up to the Rio as well as the pilot to keep in mind which waypoint they moved up and replaced each time they move up and replace them. So that way you can move through a very complex navigational uh, flight plan in the Tomcat even though you are limited on how many waypoints you can actually place. And again, just kind of going this way and kind of putting the onus on the Rio and the pilot will allow you as the mission maker to integrate Tomcats a lot easier and copy and paste flights of Tomcats and have a whole bunch of waypoints and uh, just up to the pilot and the Rio to swap them in and out as required. So this uh, tip and trick was kind of uh, you know, talked about a lot when the Tomcat first released, but uh, and this whole idea of swapping out waypoints into the INS was talked about quite a bit at the release of this aircraft, but uh, it's kind of fallen off the radar, and I think a lot of people have forgotten about how to actually do this. So uh, that's why I wanted to make this video and make it easier for Tomcat pilots and my missions to navigate alongside the more modern aircraft that, of course, also present in those missions. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Fly safe out there.